are is there anything that the CMTS sees? Like, the, does the CMTS treat IP video traffic any differently from other types of traffic? Is there anything that the CMTS can do, or or be optimized from from the standpoint of improving IP video traffic? And and what are what are operators doing with this type of traffic today? From your experience, you know, I always have an opinion. <laughs> That's why I asked. <laughs> this is probably the most quiet I have been in 20 minutes in one of our Google Hangouts. So I've been hanging back, listening the whole time, and I have about four or five points. One, um, adaptive bit rate. So you have variable bit rate, you have adaptive bit rate. Adaptive bit rate is TCP based. So one of the major things I think about on a capacity planning side is I might be doing downstream video, but it's requiring upstream acknowledgments. So just throwing more downstream speed at something to get a bigger downstream pipe doesn't do me any good if the upstream pipe is congested with acknowledgments. So I have to make sure that my upstream is you know, just as clean as, say, my downstream. Or if I start increasing my downstream pipe, my upstream pipe has to increase as well. Now, what I found is a lot of modems that are doing upstream bonding, downstream bonding, uh, the acts are concatenated. Uh, we have modems by default will have um, a, uh, what is it called act suppression where say four acknowledgements come in the cable modem might say hey there's four acknowledgements in my buffer let's drop the first three and send the fourth so instead of requiring say one act for every two downstream frames I might be getting be getting better TCP windowing if you will so I won't require so much upstream speed to support downstream speed but when I start looking at adaptive bit rate, most of the services are five, seven megabits per second. They're not 100 megabits per second. They're not one gig. Uh, all these video streams, and that's another key, key point is, th the reason why it's adaptive bit rate is, I might be watching on my phone, then I'm watching on a tablet, then I'm watching on my 4K TV. So there's different bit, bit rates needed for those different types of viewing uh, devices. So it's changing depending on the speed I have in my house and everything else. But I have maybe five different screens going on at the same time in my house. But each one is only requiring maybe five, three, seven megabits per second. I found that each of these service flows don't really get the advantage of act suppression because they're really not that fast. If I was doing 100 meg down, a TCP 100 meg down, normally it'd be about two meg up just for acts. But with act suppression, it might be 700 kilobit per second. But if I'm only doing 10 meg down, I don't really see act suppression really coming into play very much. So I'm still about a 1 to 50 ratio on my downstream to upstream. So with the multiple flows, I could have considerable upstream traffic that I wasn't aware of or wasn't planning for. Going to Doxus 3.1 is great. Throwing a bigger pipe at it is great. But I have to make sure my upstream is ready for it. So that's capacity planning considerations. The other one was more speed does not necessarily equate to better Q QOE, quality of experience. Now you're talking about jitter latency. On the CMTS side, I have a feeling, and I haven't really like tested this out that well yet, uh, could I exploit downstream power boost to allow some of these ABR flows to load up faster for maybe five, six seconds as they buffer in, but will that power boost then screw up my ABR, meaning if the TCP windowing is setting up, the adaptive bit rate is readjusting, how quickly does it readjust, how long does my power boost actually last? And you understand power boost, right? Like if I'm paying for 100 megabit per second, the CMTS provider or the cable service provider might have a power boost to 150 or 200 megabits per second for eight seconds. Will that make my pipe appear bigger? which allows my ABR to load faster and buffer faster, be a good way of exploiting ABR or vice versa. I, I don't know. I'm improving the quality of experience for the end user yeah. ultimately, I think. Is At least for that first, that first load up, right? Because you're, you might be doubling the speed just for, say, eight seconds. And maybe that's enough to load up the buffer because really adapt the bit rate and over the top video, you're loading a file. You're sort of loading a file. You're loading it up. And then it's buffering and then you start watching it and it's still loading as you're watching it. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think this view takes us into the, the aspects of IPTV, which...